stand here and listen to your insanity, I have to go steal a get well card from a kidney patient. <laughs> This is G-E. It's just G now, Jack. I saw the E. To Samsung. They're Samsung now. <laughs> you like that entrance? <laughs> Change is right. <laughs> oh, good morning, my dearly, dearly beloved... It's Dan coming at you live from beautiful, beautiful Oak Lawn, Illinois. So glad you're here. Hey, we got to connect somehow. So this is our our live connect every morning. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. I'm going to be here. SpongeBob with me there today. <laughs> hey, what I'd love to know is who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Can somebody please tell me who lives... Uh, yeah, 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 Spongebob. Yeah, I was saying, I'm going to be here live every morning, uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Central Time. Hope you can join in on all the festivities. Leave a comment uh, if you can, if you're willing. If you're willing to come out of the shadows, that lets, that, that lets us kind of have a two-way connection. I love it. I read all those comments, great ones. Fun ones. Boy, yesterday I had one of those moments. I was actually out walking. Beautiful day yesterday here in Chicago, um, uh, Oak Lawn. And, <laughs> and uh, I had one of those moments where it just, like all of a sudden it felt like, this is, what are we, in a dream? You know, have you had this happen yet? Like, it just, it all felt so surreal. It's just, uh, it's really a weird time. I hope you're doing all right. <laughs> SpongeBob hopes you're doing all right too. By the way, can you tell that I watched <laughs> that I watched way too much television when I was a kid? Yeah, yeah. It it warps the mind, and uh, that's part of the problem. At least that's the excuse I'm going with. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we're uh, having uh, a little time of encouragement. I read some scripture. We have a little prayer together. People send me sometimes some nice good news stories. And we, we need some positive encouragement, some optimism. And so that's what I'm trying to do here in the mornings. Maybe a little bit of hijinks too. Can we have some hijinks? Is that all right? <laughs> I just rediscovered that word, hijinks. I like. I really like that word, hijinks. That's a nice one. Uh, anyhow, let's see. What are we going to do? Well, let's read a scripture passage. Why don't we do that? Let's read a scripture passage here first. And uh, I'm in the book of. I'm. I'm in First John. I'm going to read First John chapter four, verses seven through twenty-one. I am not reading through the Bible in sort of like a systematic way. I'm just picking and choosing verses. I'm looking for things that um, have spoken to me recently in my own reading and things that I'm hoping will be encouraging uh, to everyone. So I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this in a real comprehensive, systematic way. It's just skipping around. Uh, I hope that's all right with you. This is from uh, the book of 1 John. Now, there's a Gospel John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, at the beginning of the New Testament. This this is more towards the end of the New Testament. This is 1 John. Somebody's got a puppy dog waving there. Hey, who is that? Is that uh, Kevin? Any, anyhow, that was cute. <laughs> I wish you could see what I see. I just see all these things floating across the screen. So this is uh, 1 John chapter 4. Again, I'm going to read verses 7 through 21. No, 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 no. You sit back. You relax. You just, you, you go on about your business. Wash the dishes. Do whatever it is you're doing. Get on the treadmill. Do some walking. I'll do the reading. Mm -hmm. Glad to help out. Glad to do it. 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 7. Dear friends, ah, oh, this is... <laughs> Now I just I just started and I already re I already remembering now why I selected this passage. Oh, you're going to love this. This is incredible. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. 
where does who's what is the originating source of love god love comes from all real true all genuine love wherever it happens has god as its source love comes from god anyone who loves is a child of god and knows god but anyone who does not love does not know god for god is love sometimes people tell me i overemphasize love i I think the Bible puts tremendous emphasis. Well, you'll see. Let me key. I think the Bible puts tremendous emphasis on love. I think Jesus put tremendous emphasis on love. Verse 9. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. That's part of like just the essence of the gospel message right there. Good news. The gospel message. This is real love. Not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Verse 11, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, uh, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Again, this is like essential gospel information right here. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them. Is that a declaration you've made? And they live in God. God lives in them and they live in God. Verse 16, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in in his love. God is love. Now, he's not just love. There are other aspects and characteristics uh, to, to God and his nature and who he is, but he is love. God is love. Again, it's not me making it up because I want to have a, a big love fest. This is what the Bible t clearly teaches. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Ah, very nice. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. Ooh. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. I want to talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. Perfect love expels all fear. Awesome, awesome. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other, verse 19. We love each other because he loved us first. He's the initiator of love and the source of it. Verse 20. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Oh, man, that's chock full of <laughs> great doctrine and theology and teaching and, and the essential gospel. Um, but so much about love there. A couple things I want to point out uh, from those passages that I, rest, uh, that I just read there. First of all, that verse uh, 18, perfect love expels all fear. This is something I've talked about. Uh, if you're an attender at, at uh, the First Church of God where I'm the pastor, you've probably heard me talk about this before, but I think it's such an incredibly important point because so many people wrestle with fear. Lots of people, you know, right now, yes, but even, be even before all this stuff with COVID-19 and all of that, people, it's just, it's a very human thing. We wrestle with fear and anxiety. This passage says perfect love expels all fear. Here, think of it like this. The more we understand, we, we can grow in understanding. The more we understand that God loves us, the more we accept his love. The more we accept it, see, we can reject his love. We can, we're can we capable of doing that. But the more we accept his love, the more we embrace his love, the more we live in the truth of his love, the less fear we will experience. 
It's, it's almost like it works like this. As our understanding, our appreciation, our experience of God's love goes up, as that goes up, fear goes down. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the, the less fear we experience, because his love is perfect. We talked about perfect love in that text. Is God's love, is it less than, per no, it's perfect. God's love is perfect. And so, again, the more we realize that our creator loves us, he does. He loves you. Now it's talking about our realization of that. The more we realize that our Creator loves us with a perfect love, the less we experience fear. I've wrestled with fear before. I know many of you, probably all of us have at one point or another. Perfect love. Our, our God, our almighty Creator loves us. As we get that, like really get it, the fear will diminish. The other thing is uh, in verse 19 from this page. Again, there's more here, but just a couple of things that, that jump out for me. Verse 19, it says, God loved us first. This is another idea that I, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, so, it's so compelling to me. And I think it's so interesting. See, we did not we did not initiate love for God. Sometimes it feels to us like, well, and then I loved God. Then I, I discovered that I loved God. But, but, but like God, we got to understand, he didn't begin to draw near to us when we began to love him and, and it became clear to us that we love him. No, no, no. He loved us first. He loved, he, matter of fact, God loved us before we ever loved him. The Bible says, he loved us when we were still sinners, like when we were shaking our fist at God, when we were antagonistic toward God, he still loved us. He loves us first. God's love always goes before. God's love is first. You know, I get frustrated sometimes because to me, this thing of love is so vitally, vitally important. And so I get frustrated when Christians are referred to sometimes Christians are referred to as haters. That really bothers me. First of all, it's just, it's not true. It's not true. But also the, the other thing is, typically this happens, Christians are called haters typically, because we draw these moral boundaries based on the Bible. We say based on the Bible that, you know, there are certain things that are right and there are certain things that are wrong. And people take that and they describe that then as hating. Ah, oh, these haters. You know, uh, these, these Christians are terrible. But friends, think about it. Mm -hmm. If drawing moral boundaries and, and, and recognizing certain things as right and certain things as wrong, if that really is hatred, then everybody's a hater. Be because everybody has moral boundaries, right? I mean, they're somewhere. They may, they may be very different than yours or mine, but everybody has some moral. See, everybody has some things that they would say, oh, that's right and that's wrong. Everybody has that. In fact, think about it. The person who describes a Christian as a hater because Christians have these moral boundaries and certain things are right and certain things are wrong, that person has moral boundaries. In fact, when they're calling a Christian a hater because of that, they're expressing their moral boundaries. They're expressing what they find to be wrong. They're saying Christians are wrong. So th they have a right and wrong too. So if having a right and wrong and drawing moral boundaries makes you a hater, everybody's a hater then. You get what I'm saying there? I'm, I, I know <laughs> I'm on a little bit of a tangent here, but again, I just I, I always feel so bad when Christians are described as haters because Christians, and I know there's Christians who've done some not so good things. I get that, but when Christians um, genuinely realize, when we genuinely understand who it is that we serve, we realize that we don't hate anybody. We're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. We're we're told in the Bible to love our enemies. Jesus called us to do that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 says, Let love be your highest goal. If you're a follower of Jesus, many of you people are. Many of folks who are watching right now, maybe not everyone, but if you're a follower of Jesus, it says, let love be your highest goal. That's what the Bible says, your highest goal. Jesus told us, what's the greatest commandment? Love God, love others. That's a paraphrase, but love God, love others. That's the highest, the greatest commandment. If you follow that one, you follow all the other ones. The passage from 1 John chapter 4 that I just read this morning tells us, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. 
Hey, friends, um, God's word is, is very clear on this. Let us love one another. So, um, let's see, what are we doing? Ah, you know, I keep forgetting my bell. I forgot my bell. There we go. <laughs> I'm still getting used to doing this. I'm sorry. One of the things I uh, am asking folks to do is send me some good news stories. Let me know about good things that are going on. And I've been searching around for that kind of stuff, too. My friend Kathy sent me a link to an article yesterday. And... Um, great article. People are doing good things. People are trying to uh, to uh, step in and and help in, in significant ways. And so this was an article that Kathy sent me. It's out of Concordia University in Wisconsin. And um, the author is Kali Teal. And the title of the article is Concordia, the, the university, Concordia 3D prints needed respirator masks amid the coronavirus outbreak. They're using their 3D printers. Here, I'm gonna read some of the article for you. Just good things, nice things, helpful things people are chipping in and doing. Um, so it says this, with the largest 3D printing capacity of any nonprofit in the state of Wisconsin, Concordia University has sprung into action to fill the production gap of one of the most necessary medical supplies for professionals combating this novel coronavirus. Uh, still from the article, COVID-19 has caused a global shortage of the heavy-duty N95 respirator masks. I have some friends who work in healthcare who've, who've told me there's, there's kind of a shortage of masks right now. Um, these are the masks utilized by healthcare workers to avoid contamination, N95. As manufacturers worldwide scramble to find innovative ways to maximize production, Concordia along with some regional partners, is doing its part to serve its hometown community. Leaning on direct input from area medical professionals on the front lines, Concordia has teamed up with uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison's prototyping center to identify an ideal prototype of this mask to be printed. What they came up with is not certified, um, but the, the, you know, the directness of the concern, everything, it doesn't allow time for that, but it's what the doctor ordered, according to the article here. I'm still reading. Um, Dr. Dan Sem says, we're hearing from the medical community that they need the masks, and they need them now. Um, our goal is to get these N95 prototypes produced and delivered as quickly as possible to keep the medical professionals using them as safe as possible. They need these masks now. So while the typical university owns at most a handful of 3D printers, Concordia's brand new marker space lab boasts 30 machines. They got 30 of these 3D printers. I've never seen one of these things in action. That must be a, a fascinating thing. Um, each one is currently engaged in printing prototypes all day long. Within a 24-hour span, Concordia's, Concordia's marker space has the capacity to print upwards of 70 respirator masks under one design. I guess there's different designs for these masks. That will add up to around 1,000 respirator masks within the two weeks that two local manufacturers estimate it will take them pr to produce a large-scale solution. Why don't we just go to Final Jeopardy? Yeah, so this is really, really cool. They're, they're, they're jumping in there, and they're doing their best to help out. And, and we're seeing these kind of stories, aren't we, all the time? Um, groups, organizations, uh, uh, companies, corporations, retooling and doing things so that they can jump in and help. Um, we're going to get through this, friends. We're, we're, we're still in a difficult part of it right now. We're all hunkered down and all of that, but we're going to get through this, and, and um, people are doing good things. It's not all bad news. I know that you know that by now, but I just want to encourage you. There's hope. There's good things. Hang in there. We're going to be all right. It's going to be good. Um, sort of along those lines of encouragement and hope, if you have an answer to prayer or, or just something good that's happened mm -hmm. to you lately, I'd love for you to share that. 
Um, share that in the comment section. And I'm, I'm going to read some of these things that people share because um, I read through all those comments every day. And uh, I want us to uh, have that kind of interaction where you're talk talking about good things that are happening and we're sharing that stuff. And um, so what do I have here? Oh, this is one that came in yesterday. This is from my friend Patty. And uh, she sent me this. She says, uh, this was one of the comments. Actually, I, I believe this is where this was. Um, I think this is where the, it was posted. I still believe, Patty writes, I still believe that God has his hands in all of this. I believe he's sending us all a message that we need to start believing in him. Just like the story you read, she's referring to a story that I read yesterday about an atheist doctor in Italy who's come back to his faith in God as a result of seeing everything that's going on and, and understanding that their human um, uh, abilities will only take them so far. And, and this doctor was influenced by this priest who, who died, but who was ministering lovingly to people right up to the end of his life. That's the story that she refers to. Here was a non-believer, and it took all of these sick people and a man with a Bible, that's the priest, that opened up this doctor's eyes. God's message is getting through to so many people during this horrible time. Then Patty's words, or is it horrible? If this virus is going to bring all of us closer to Christ and the non-believers to Christ, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. So God, you know, there's there's also this idea that we find. I'm going to read as part of the, our scripture readings. I'm going to read uh, some portions of that story at some point in the book of Genesis. There's the story of Joseph, and one of the lines in the story of Joseph has to do with God bringing good things out of bad. Doesn't mean that we minimize the bad or that the bad's okay. We we we, we can still have sorrow about the bad. We can still feel um, sadness because bad things happen. But God can take and bring good, even out of bad. And um, this is part of what gives us hope. This is part of what gives us encouragement. And in fact, we know uh, one of, one of uh, the verses in the Bible says that God causes everything, this is in an ultimate sense, everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Romans 8, verse 28. So it's going to be, ultimately, if you're, if, you're, if you're walking with God, it's going to be okay. We're going to be okay. No matter how this all shakes out, it's, it's going to be good. Um, Want to have a closing prayer with you? Again, we read some scripture. We have a little fun. Uh, drink some Mountain Dew. Diet Mountain Dew. And uh, have, some, have some prayer together. Thanks again for uh, joining me today. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I know there are a number of prayer requests out there. Um, we did a live feed of our Bible study last night and people posted prayer requests. I read all of those prayer requests. More important, God knows about all of those prayer requests and we lift those before him. So I'm going to pray and um, uh, I hope you can join in with me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, um, these are such strange times. And um, they're unsettling times for us. We thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you that you love us with a perfect love. And that means that um, we can live. It is possible for us to live without fear. Not that, that we wouldn't have concern and, and uh, be careful and all that. We understand those realities, Lord. But, but we don't have to live with fear. And we thank you that that's because of you. I pray, Lord, for myself <laughs> And for everybody who's watching, that we would accept your love, that we would recognize your love. It's there and it's true. Help us to recognize this. Holy Spirit, do a work in us so that we, so that we will live in the truth of your love and therefore we will not be afraid. I pray for all my friends who are watching and listening right now and for those who will watch and listen to this after the live feed is over. Bless them today, Lord. Walk with them today. Lord, let us be a light today. Let, let the light of Jesus in us shine in such a way that, um, that we bring light to others. Um, let us be the ones who um, let us be the ones who give hope and encouragement to others, because that is so needed in our world right now, Lord. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Oh, man. It's great. It's fun. Thank You know what? This is so meaningful for me. I appreciate that you would come and that we could spend some time together like this. Don't forget, my friends. Don't forget to live, love, laugh, and leave the fear and the worry behind. Leave that, but God is still on the throne. Uh, God bless you, my dear friends. I love you.